So an extension I'm very excited about is the on-chain wallet extension. This used to be called watch only because you could give it an XPUB and it would derive fresh addresses for you and keep an eye on your funds. Um, but now we can also create payments. So we can create a PSBT from our UTXOs and then send that to a piece of software like Electrum or a hardware wallet like Trezor, sign it, send it back to the extension and broadcast it to the mempool. That in itself is very, very cool. Um, but not only do we have that, the contributor who helped upgrade the extension, Vlad Stan, has also built us a wonderful hardware wallet, cheap hardware wallet, which we can connect to Elevits and have a private key on and sign transactions on as well. So I first met Vlad Stan when um, I was working on an update for the Bowser wallet and I needed some help and he was working on Bitcoin JS at the time. And we never finished that project, but I always wanted to, you know, roll out some cheap hardware wallets. We're using the great uh, Ubitcoin library by Stefan Snigrev of Spect Wallet. And uh, for the hardware itself, we're using a ESP32 based microcontroller, the Lilygo T display. That's the same microcontroller we use with the point of sale. And we've actually got this really nice case, which uh, Black Coffee has designed for us. Um, but if I open this up, you can see inside, we have that T display. A lot of you are used to already because we use the same microcontroller in our points of sale. So some of you may have these spare, but this is an ESP32 with a screen and a couple of buttons. So you can also use something like this M5 stack, um, which is again, is an ESP32 with a screen and some buttons. So as long as you have those few features, it really doesn't matter what ESP32 you use. Um, so once we flash the device, if we plug it in, there we go. You'll see it turn on and then it count down from five seconds. It basically gives us five seconds to connect to our on-chain wallet extension in LM bits. Um, so let's go open that up. So I'll make a wallet and then go to manage extensions and I can't find it. So I'll use this on chain, there we go. Enable open right um i think yeah let me do a hard refresh because i've already connected this device so it'll probably be the name of the device um so if i turn it unplug it plug the hardware wallet in again click on connect for a few seconds to connect and then once it's connected there we go we get a pin um, information between the hardware wallet device and the software is encrypted. So we can confirm there is a solid connection between the two. Now we can, if we want, wipe the device and then it will generate a random seed for us using some entropy um, from the uh, Wi-Fi signal chip in the ESP32 microcontroller. But actually I want to restore an old hardware wallet I have which um, I'm pretty sure has some funds on. So I'm gonna put my word list in there, separate by space. I did have a passphrase, so I'm gonna add my passphrase I used. Um, I also, uh, we also add a password as well, and this is for some of the encryption for the data which is sent between the software and the hardware. So if I restore that, we log in first, then, once we're logged in, we can confirm that the wallet is the correct wallet by viewing the seed. That all works. Now we can pull in the XPUB from the hardware device. I wasn't using SegWit for my addresses, I was using Legacy. Um, so I'll pull in a Legacy XPUB. We can also do Taproot and Wrap SegWit as well, which is immensely cool. Um, I'll call my hardware wallet the um, watch only wallet uh, legacy just so I know add watch only account and then you can see here we have our xpub you should probably add the ability to press a button and show a QR code on there as well that'll be next so now if we scan our blockchain um, then uh, we'll be scanning the addresses which are derived from this xpub and checking to see if there's any funds in those addresses and then pulling them into the extension so we can make a payment.
Here we are, we found some funds. I'll click on history. There we are, we found a little bit more. Fantastic, that should be enough for me to pay for some hosting from Lunar Node. So, if I go to Lunar Node, so I want to put £10 in using Bitcoin. And then pay with Bitcoin. Lunar Node uses the excellent BTC Pay server. Copy, copy the amount. New payment, 49,000 sats. And then address. Okay, now um, you can uh, change some of the configuration of this PSPT. So you can change the fee which you're going to pay, the coins you're going to use, the change address where you want the change to go. But I'm just going to let it you know, take care of that for me. I'm going to click check and send. The PSPT has gone to the device. Okay, it's passed over it. I can confirm that's correct. In the browser, yeah, that's correct. How much is going to cost me? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now I've got to confirm by pressing the button on, button on the hardware device. And then this is our signed PSBT. When I click send, it's going to send it to the mempool. And we've sent that to the mempool. So now it's just a case of, oh, there we are. And look at that, Luna node has seen the payment go into the mempool and uh, I can return to my Luna node and use my uh, hosting. And that's it. We've made a, we've imported a wallet to um, our hardware device, and then um, we've sent some funds to pay for a service. And we've got our addresses, we've got our UTXOs, we've got our history. Uh, works really well. Um, this isn't, you know, the world's most secure hardware wallet, but it's perfectly fine to give to somebody who's going to manage a moderate amount of funds, particularly if. They would uh, otherwise be just putting those funds on some exchange or um, on a phone, on a, uh, a on-chain wallet on their phone. There is one huge benefit to this solution, and that is lack of supply chain attack. The manufacturer which I bought this from um, and have probably have my personal details, which is my address, they have no idea that I'm using it for uh, creating a Bitcoin device. And as well as that, I can be assured that in the factory, nobody put any hardware in there or um, uh, any sort of firmware hackery in there uh, because they knew that the device they were making would be a hardware wallet. They have no idea that they, I was going to turn this into a hardware wallet. So I, I find that a kind of pretty cool um, security model. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again. Cheers.